Hello once again witchy people, welcome back to the Covenstead and today we're carrying on our series Eye of Newt which is describing how weird sounding magic potion ingredients are actually quite normal everyday things usually from plants and last week well the last video on it was longer than a week ago we did bats today it's going to be literally Eye of Newt so it's going to be newts, frogs, toads that sort of animal so if there's any weird noises once again i do apologize the dog's having a funny five minutes might be barkley so with that in mind let's carry on so i have newt as most people know um julie b actually did mention it in the last comments is mustard seed now you can use black uh white or yellow mustard seed and you can also use that for frogs toads and depending on what kind of frog or toad or newt that you use depends on the colour of the mustard seed. Um, yellow mustard seed is quite good for newts because the outer of their eye, of the smooth newt anyway, is yellow. So that was easy. Next is toe of frog. Now toe of frog is an interesting one because it's represented in magic potions with buttercup. Now that's the buttercup and I've got to get this right. I have written down some Latin names but I am no good at saying them. So it's the ranunculus aris, I think. Ranunculus Aris. Anyway, the buttercup. Now, if you look at a buttercup, it doesn't look much like a frog's foot, but if you look at the leaves growing straight from the stem, it does, which is where I think that come from. Now, quite interestingly, if you have a frog's leg or a frog's foot, you can use the buttercup leaf. So there's that one. The buttercup does actually play quite a large role in representing parts of frogs because it also represents a frog's tongue. That also is when I say frog, I'm going to say frog, newts and toads. So if you want to represent their tongue, you use the buttercup root or the buttercup stalk, whichever is easier for you to get hold of. Next is an interesting one. It's liver. The liver of a frog. And this is, um, you find it in a couple of uh, magical potion recipes, frog's liver. You don't actually need the liver of a frog. You need something much much worse you need the liberty mushroom <sighs> Lib liberty cap mushroom now the liberty cap liberty cap mushroom is i can't say the latin name thank you barkley uh, but it's also known as the magic mushroom <laughs> this is the fourth time i've recorded this i'm not getting anywhere am i <clears throat> so yes so um liver is magic mushroom or you can use any sort of like filled mushroom but usually it's the magic mushroom and if you see the colour and the shape of it you'll understand why it's chosen as a, uh, the liver of a frog <clears throat> so next is frog spawn new eggs anything like that now this has been a bit debatable it can be um, I think we call it uh, duck duckweed which those little bits floating on a pond little green leaves um, you can also use barley wheat the seeds and you soak them in water and that looks like frog spawn obviously now i think that the best thing to do would be to use sago now because sago, sago um, if, especially if you mix it with chia seeds or chia seeds as some people like to say it does look like frog spawn seriously it does and that's all this is it's representing something in your potion that you feel and using something that you feel represents or looks like the, in the ingredient that you're saying so uh, next one's a really easy one skin of toad or water of toad um, now I have been told that you can use acorn the acorn cups for this what the obvious one, obviously, is the agari, uh, uh, agaric toadstool, the red toadstool. It's called a toadstool uh, with the little white button, the little white like lumps on skin of uh, toad. Now, the skin of a frog is slightly different. The best um, representation for that is actually the velvet, sh the velvet shank mushroom. <laughs> I will try and get a picture up round about now. So next, to represent a smooth newt, you can use, and I love this, a beech leaf or a silver birch leaf. 
No, a silver birch leaf is a great crested newt. And if you look at a great crested newt with the lovely filigree sort of like top to it, you'll understand why you can use a silver birch leaf. Um, you can also use oak moss or lichen, any kind of lichen to represent um, anything sort of innards is good. Uh, frogs innards, toads innards, use the lichen, especially oak moss is absolutely brilliant for that. Um, you can also use um, wild geranium, uh, especially the roots because they've got this lovely colour to them. But as with all of these things, it really is how you want to interpret something. So if you think, I mean, a um, friend of mine, when she, well, friend of a friend, when she uses newts or parts of newt in a, re in a recipe, she will use uh, bits of wood that look like the animals, you see? So you use what, what it is that to you can represent the animal, to you what reminds you of part of that animal. And you know, this is how this whole thing started in the first place. This is what we used to do and have done for quite a while. <laughs> so there you go. Newts, toads and frogs. Wasn't that fun? I'll be back very soon. Thank you for watching, witchy people. Bye for now.